subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button people have to live in in unity we are still in transition civil society has been decimated of course we rely on media and i think the government has not done enough the international community has failed to respond no place in the world is perfect the yoga event is held here severe injustice and they should be stopped we should raise our voices condemn this uh, brutal act with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show with Afghanistan, where the government has agreed to release the last batch of hardcore 400 Talibani prisoners. The Ghani administration, which was inflexible until last week, gave in to the potential prospects of a ceasefire getting pursued after this decision. The Taliban, however, have yet not taken a call on it. Based on Taliban history and behavior, the experts too are not very optimistic about the insurgent group agreeing to ceasefire during talks. A report. Ashraf Ghani and his team, which opposed the release of 400 hardcore Taliban prisoners, have given up on their stand in the larger interest of war torn Afghanistan. They have agreed to the advice of Loya Jirga, the Grand Afghan Assembly, which advised the administration to release these prisoners under strict conditions, including monitoring post-release. The first batch of 80 prisoners was released on Friday, with remaining 322 to be released in a phased manner. With this, the Afghan government will fulfill its pledge to release 5,000 Taliban prisoners. The process will immediately be followed by the talks between the warring sides of Taliban and the government of Afghanistan in the Qatari capital Doha. President Ghani believes that the real spirit of the talks can only be pursued under the complete ceasefire across the country. انتخاب از طالبان امروز طالبا باید نشان بدن که از آتش بس سرتاسری ترس ندارن خواهش لوی جرگه افغانستان برای آتش بس سرتاسری و برای خدمات سرتاسری در سرتاسر افغانستان قبول The Taliban haven't responded and many believe that they are not likely to stick to the proposition. Under a deal signed by the Taliban and the US in February, the intra-Afghan talks were slated to start in March but were delayed amid political infighting in Kabul and as a contentious prisoner swap dragged on. The deal stipulated that Kabul would free about 5,000 Taliban prisoners in return for 1,000 Afghan security personnel held captive by the Taliban. Former chief executive and an ally in government, Abdullah Abdullah, who has had confrontations with Ghani team over the appointment of minister, call it an unprecedented moment. فیصله قطعنامه لوی جرگی تاریخی لوی جرگی مشورتی آخرین بحانه ها را از سر رای شروع مذاکرات بین الافغانی رفع کرد و ما شما انشاءالله در آستانه شروع مذاکره قرار داریم تمام نظریات شما تمام نظریات شما مورد اعترام همه ما و انشاءالله تا وجایی که ممکن باشه تعهد جمهوری اسلامی افغانستان به عملی کردنش است 
the Donald Trump administration, which will go to polls this year, is hoping to end on a high foreign policy note. If a sustainable deal is hammered out of intra-Afghan peace negotiations, then the U.S. might order a complete withdrawal of its troops from Afghanistan. Bringing the troops back was a campaign promise of President Trump. An up Taliban offensive has obstructed his decision more than once. According to a UN report, in 2019 alone, more than 10,000 civilians were killed or injured in the conflict, bringing total casualties in the past decade to over 100,000. The upcoming phase is going to be the most crucial time in Afghanistan's two and a half decades of history. The decisions will change power dynamics but don't guarantee peace. Although Taliban has hinted at supporting women participation in public discourse and abolishing the draconian laws against the gender on returning to the main course, the group has failed to build any credibility among Kabul or Washington administration, or more importantly, the people of Afghanistan. We are now joined by Dipankar Sen Gupta, senior professor and a foreign policy expert in India. Sir, how do you analyze the current developments in war on Afghanistan? Do you believe at personal level that these 400 prisoners should have been left? Uh, these prisoners should not have been released. See, what is going on is the following. From time to time, Pakistan, uh, these Pakistan-aided uh, Taliban keep on attacking Afghanistan forces, civilians in Afghanistan, uh, specifically ethnic minorities like the Hazaras, etc. They kill mercilessly and they know it's a low-risk strategy because if they get caught, if they are basically taken prisoners of war, then pressure will be put on the Afghanistan government and these soldiers or these killers will be let loose again to again carry out their nefarious acts. So this is a serious problem which basically does not serve any purpose at all except to encourage the Taliban. As for the current situation in, Taliban, in Afghanistan, I am afraid the negotiations with uh, the Taliban have made things worse. Moving on. One third of the Delta country, Bangladesh, has submerged deep into flood waters with over 200 people dying due to one or the other flood-related incident in past few weeks. Government says more than a million people are marooned and have been starving for days. The situation has worsened in the country with pandemic COVID-19 already making its way throughout the nation. Srinagar village in Murshidabad district is deluged. The homes are on the verge of submerging entirely with nearby Padma River overflowing its banks. Residents were forced to travel by boats and had to move their cattle to higher grounds to avoid the flooding. Dozens of those who couldn't procure any resources succumbed to the nature's fury. The country's agriculture ministry has said that the longest running flood in over two decades in Bangladesh have submerged nearly 80,000 hectares of paddy fields. The heaviest rain in years began last month and are part of subcontinent's summer monsoon from June to September. The last floods which did a similar damage were in 1988 when the devastation had killed nearly 500 people and left 25 million people homeless. This year's flood, however, are deadly in a manner that they have erupted amidst the widely spread pandemic. It has complicated the efforts of fighting the novel coronavirus. 
Bangladesh has reported 269,115 COVID-19 infections with 3,557 deaths as of Friday. While the level of water has receded in some locations, the trail of destruction it has left is unprecedented and people worry that this might take weeks to settle. The European Union said it has provided 1.65 million euros of humanitarian aid to support the flood victims of Bangladesh, India and Nepal. The EU made it clear that out of the total funding, 1 million euro will be spent to address the urgent humanitarian needs in Bangladesh. The United Nations Office of Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs estimates that half of Bangladesh will be affected by worsening floods in coming days. Recently released pictures by NASA Earth Observatory have not given any hope to people and authorities with tens of thousands fearing for their lives and thousands of others standing in the verge of giving up. Pakistan establishment, which functions largely under the influence of army generals, has been oppressing ethnicities it identifies alien to itself. Baloch, Pashtuns, Kashmiris are regularly subjected to state-sponsored violence. Sindhis, who have made major contributions to the growth and history of Pakistan, are being systematically eliminated. Abduct and kill policy has become normal, with anybody daring to speak against authorities meeting his fate. Lala Aslam Patan, a senior vice chairman of the nationalist Jason Mutahida Mahaj Party, was the latest in the target of Pakistan security agencies. He was fortunate as he was not present when the gunmen raided his house and neighborhood. But not every target is missed. Pakistan security agencies have eliminated hundreds of Sindhi activists and politicians in the last few years. Their violent operations intensified recently after Sindhi leaders called for a boycott of Pakistan's Independence Day on 14th August and asked rather observe it as a black day. The call, however, was not unreasonable. Despite being one of the four provinces of the country, Sindh has never been accorded the treatment at par with other Pakistani citizens, especially the elite Punjabis. No लोग उठाए जाते मैं दर्जन इसलिए कह रहा हूं कि ये पांचों सूबों के या चार सूबों के आजाद कश्मीर कर लें या गिलगित बल्तिस्तान कर लें इन तमाम इलाकों में रोजाना कोई ना कोई उठाए जा रहा है कम से कम भी एक आदमी तो उठाए जा एक फर्द तो उठाए जा रहा अब तो औरतें भी उठाई जाती और एक एक भाई जाता है तो दूसरे भाई को भी उठा लेते हैं और कोई एक दफा गया तो दूसरी दफा भी उठा लेते हैं उसे Massive protests have erupted lately in the region, demanding Pakistan to abandon its brutal policy of killing people who oppose the establishment. The Human Rights Watch report in 2019 had categorically mentioned that Pakistani forces were carrying out human rights violations with impunity. Pakistan has made it a policy that anyone who succeeds in mobilizing even a handful of mass must be stopped through one exercise or other. They don't hesitate to even kill these people.
पाकिस्तान के फौजी हुंडे वो लोग जिन्होंने 1947 से सिंध जमीन को लूटा है यहाँ पे आके यहीं की माँ बोली यहीं की मादरी जबान सिंधी पे पाबंदी लगाई है वही फौजी जो लूटने आए थे आज भी लूट रहे हैं फर्क सिर्फ ये है कि इस दफा वो एक जाम साकी को पकड़ के जेल में नहीं बंद करते हैं। वो एक हैदर बख जतोई को नहीं अरेस्ट करके कई साल जेल में रखते हैं कोई जीएम सैयद नहीं है दबाने के लिए अब हर वो नौजवान जो सिंध जमीन को चूमता है और राजा दाहिर की कसम खा के कहता है कि ये मोहम्मद बिन कासिम से वापस लेगी जमीन उसको वही फौज आज उठा के फेंक रही है इंटीग्रेटेड डेटा फ्रॉम वेरियस ह्यूमन राइट्स ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस कंफर्म दैट मोर देन 16,000 पर्सन रिमेन मिसिंग एंड अनअकाउंटेड फॉर इन पाकिस्तान in cases when agencies find it hard to eliminate them entirely they are imprisoned in communicado without legal protection making them much more vulnerable to torture and other abuses pakistan has blatantly disregarded the un convention against torture suppression of religion is frequent in sin through the intensification of state violence using islamic militancy against non muslim and muslim non sunni sects have been especially alarming in a systematic design as many as 20000 new madrasas have been opened in sin in last few years which focus teaching bigotry towards non muslim beliefs Moving on, Democrats and Republicans are geared up for a rigorous run-up to the most coveted presidential elections on the planet. As the date inches closer, the candidates have shown their cards. While a number of issues and factors matter in election, the significance of Indian American community cannot be ignored. Presidential candidate Joe Biden's decision of picking an Indian origin Kamala Harris as his running mate for vice president has confirmed to value Indian origin people and India holds in American discourse. We bring you a small report. With a little less than 3 months to the presidential polls, Democrats and Republicans are gearing up for a fierce run-up. While the Trump administration has been relentless and unforgiving against the Chinese, dispensation for its complicity in spreading the deadly coronavirus, the Democrats have intensified attack on four years of Trump tenure and his handling of major issues. The next US presidential term holds a significant value to New Delhi as well, as it is one of the leading strategic trade and diplomatic partners of Washington with few major deals in pipeline. While the US administration too has testified on several occasions about the importance of the bilateral relationships with India, the Indian Americans too are considered a decisive factor in US elections. Presidential candidate Joe Biden's decision of picking an Indian origin Kamala Harris as his running mate for vice president has confirmed to the growing American interest towards India. News that has sent thrills among the Indians. Being an Indian, I'm very, feeling very proud that she's from Indian origin, and uh, as far as my knowledge goes, she's been she's been creating history from 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 the very beginning. She was the first Attorney General. and then now that she's been nominated and my best wishes are with her Harris's connection to India has been confirmed by her on many occasions in the past with she recalling her times with her relatives in Chennai in several interviews her family is happy and they are proud of her so i feel happy our family feels happy okay and i feel happy that my sister shamla Her mother would have been very happy and proud of her daughter. So it's a historic day in a number of ways for the Indian community, 
for the first time getting to a high political position. With the United States' free-falling relationship with Russia and building animosity with China, it is left with India as the biggest influencer and trustworthy ally in the region. Pakistan has already betrayed it on more than one occasion. Maritime security has become an area of long-term geopolitical convergence between India and the US, encapsulated by the Indo-Pacific concept. The US has renamed its Pacific Command as the Indo-Pacific Command. The trade between the two is set to witness an unprecedented rise with trade deal round the corner. The two sides are also among the front runners in developing a vaccine. India is a dynamic country and every Indian celebrates many festivals wholeheartedly throughout the year. Janamashtami or Gokulashtami is the annual celebration of birth anniversary of Hindu Lord Krishna. Though the festival is observed with full enthusiasm across the country every year. But this year, due to the coronavirus pandemic, temples followed strict social distancing norms and devotees celebrated inside their homes. Let's have a look. The chants, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, resounded across various parts of India as the country celebrated the most auspicious Janmashtami festival. Marking the birth of Lord Krishna, who is also believed to the eighth incarnation of Lord Vishnu, the festival falls on the eighth day of Hindu month of Bhadra, which is usually in August or September. Every year, the festival is celebrated with huge grandeur all over the country. While at few places, it is commemorated by organizing Dahi Handi, in which people make human pyramids and try to break a pot of curd at the top. In others, it is celebrated by setting up a stage where an idol of Lord Krishna is enshrined in a decorated swing. However, this year, Due to the pandemic, the festival remained a low-key affair as very few people flocked the temples adhering to the social distancing norms. Corona Mahamari ke sakramana kaal mein vises jo paristitiyan social distancing hai, mask hai, unka dhyan rakhe, swayam apne ko surakshit rakhe, apne parwar ko surakshit rakhe aur jald se jald is Mahamari se भारत की भूमि को छुटकारा मिले यही राधा रमण देव के चरणों में हम प्रार्थना करते हैं इन वडोदरा सिटी ऑफ गुजरात प्रीस परफॉर्मड प्रेयर्स एंड ऑफर्ड मिल्क टू द डेटी स्टैचू ड्यूरिंग अ स्पेशल रिचुअल सेरेमनी कंसीडरिंग द पेंडेमिक प्रीस चांटेड मंत्रास wearing masks and following social distancing norms. Many across the world say that Hinduism is synonymous to festival with one or the other festival being celebrated every other week. With this, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care.